How did you get into PR? So for me, the PR company, when I was in England and I was looking to come to America and I was looking for a publicist, um, I had some friends in the adult industry and I said, you know, what do I do? How do I, you know, help get my brand to be made bigger? You know, and this person that's just coming in, there's all these people already established. So PR for me was a tool that I wanted to use and I was recommended Star Factory PR to, um, to you know, use their services, utilize their services. So I started using Star Factory PR um, and an opportunity come up um, for me to take over. It was originally, it was originally um, set up by M Mike Mars and Monstar PR and they kind of built it up. Um, and both of them, at, at, at one point, both of them ended up um, doing PR for Digital Playground. So it was at that point that I kind of come on board and I kind of took over with an assistant and kept Star Factory PR up and running um, until Monstar PR come back. So we're kind of co-owners now. Um, so that's how we come up with that opportunity. So for me, it was really nice to be able to be able to help other performers as well, you know, with branding, brand recognition, getting their names made bigger, you know. PR people think oh yeah I'll get PR I'm gonna get famous overnight and you know sometimes I have meetings with people and they're like yeah I want mainstream coverage and like okay well what's you know what's so special about you why are the mainstream going to be interested in you and people don't realize it's not just you don't just click your fingers and you know you get mainstream coverage there's there's different things that our clients have had mainstream coverage over um but it's not just, hey, I make adult movies. You know, there's got to be something else that is mm -hmm. is, is going to be there. And it also involves a lot of hard work on the on the for the performer. You know, oh, we're going to come, we're going to get PR. Well, actually, you're going to get interviews. So interviews are going to take time. You know, you've got to put yourself out there. You've got to whether they're written, whether they're you know spoken, video, you know different in-person interviews you've got to put that time aside and that commitment and i think you know people that come to us at star factory pr are serious about their career and serious about taking it to the next level and they're smart as well because they know they need something extra you know there's only so much you can sit there and you know blow your own trumpet and you know some people it's not natural to blow your own trumpet um, there's only so much that you can do without having someone behind you saying, hey, well, you know, what things have you been up to? Let us talk about this. Let us do press release on this. Let us let the, the reviewers know. Let us let, you know, the people that are there that are looking at the award nominations, let us tell them about the things that you're doing. So it's having someone that's out there looking for opportunities for you. You know, mainstream opportunities as simple as building up the contacts and, you know, hey, I've got this mainstream media website that's asking for quotes. And suddenly there you are with a quote on a link to, you know, your Twitter or your Instagram on a mainstream website. So mm -hmm. it's it's about someone who's, who's going to be there to look out for you to help with opportunities. Yeah. And then do you help people put uh, like press kits together. Cause that's the one thing that I find when I interview a lot of performers that they don't have any photos of them. They don't have like any information on them. They don't have like, um, I mean, I always try to tell people and I have one myself, like you need a press kit, um, basically a bio, some photos. Um, what kind of things would you suggest to people that they maybe have on hand should they get the opportunity to do a podcast or an interview or whatnot? Um, you know, for us, every one of our clients, we put together like, like a little mini press kit. So, mm -hmm. you know, you've had our clients on, you, we put one of our clients on you um, since Sage, she was yeah. recently. So, you know, for me, I, I was helping facilitate that. It makes it so much easier. You know, to have mm -hmm. somebody there that you can go backwards and forwards to, to to set up the date and the time. And for that, you know, we have a, a bio on file. We have a list of our hair links. We have a folder that's got images in. And we also have a list of talking points as well. So, you know, we put it down there. Even for me coming on today, you know, you, Holly, your assistant said my talking points. It, she's had my yeah. bio. It's like, here's all the things that, you know, you can 
it's going to help you with the interviews. Mm-hmm. So you've got it all there. And also it's it's good as a like a, a reminder, you know, I've got my little list sitting next to me. I'm like, make sure I tell the tell Holly and the, the listeners about like all the different platforms and all the different things that I want to talk about. It's like a little list of, you know, reminders that these are the things that I want to talk about. So yeah, it's mm-hmm. it's a little bit of helping prepare both the interviewer and you as the person that's being interviewed, a reminder to to make sure that you talk about the things that you want to promote. Yeah. When you um, see performers who are trying to market themselves, get their names out there, what's one of the biggest mistakes that you see? You know, you can do a lot of good marketing for yourself. You, you really can, you know, there's some people are really smart and they're really great on social media. They're very interactive. Um, some of the mistakes that I see people do, um, things that I really frown upon, um, it, it just doesn't sit well with me. People that cause drama on mm-hmm. social media, you can really see like inside somebody when you see them arguing openly being mean on social media and some people might think oh drama i'll get all these followers well you might get all the followers but for me that doesn't i i just don't think it's it, if that's the kind of brand that you want like a mean person that's just like a bitch to everyone yeah sure go ahead but for the majority of people i i i, I don't think that that's a good fit so you, you know just knowing that when you're online people are watching you all the time they're watching what you're saying um and it's going to reflect somewhere you know i've had people and they've come to us and you know if i look on their social media first and see what kind of person that they are Mm -hmm. and if i look at some of the things and i'm writing and i'm like that just doesn't feel right with the star factory brand i won't take them on as a client and you know sometimes here's the thing you know you 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 never know when you're going to need someone. So, you know, if you're like really mean to someone or a company and then later on, it's like you get an opportunity. Well, suddenly that opportunity could be taken away from you from something that you did in the past. You know, yeah. I honestly, I've had people that are just being like really horrible or nasty. And then like my friends going to interview them. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you sure you yeah. want to interview them? No. <laughs> I have to agree with you so much on that. Um, you know, you say as a, as a PR, um, publicist that you look at their social media and that helps you determine whether or not you want to take them on as a client. And I will say as a producer, I do the same thing. You know, if I see somebody who's rude and aggressive and attacks, you know, other people online, like, I don't want to work with you. I don't want that energy on my set because there's a lot of amazing, beautiful girls who are like really positive wonderful professional people. Like, why am I going to hire you? You know, um, it's just that nasty attitude does not get you anywhere. And I, you know, I don't, I think people should express, I think there's a way to express yourself online. You know, um, I'm, I'm particularly interested in guests. If I see that they express that they're perhaps unhappy with something, or there's something that they wish that they could change, or they disapprove of something, there's something wrong with giving your opinion online, as long as, you know, it's in a kind of respectful and professional matter. Um, and I don't think there's anything wrong either with like, you know, talking about maybe if you've had a bad day or, you know, cause we're all human. And I think that that can, um, people can emphasize, empathize Empathize. with that, not emphasize, (laughs) empathize with that. Um, and that can open up a a connection with your fans, but I agree that that nastiness and, you know, I saw a lot of that in quarantine. I think like a lot of people were just going stir crazy and they were stuck at home and they were afraid and they were angry. And I saw some like nasty, nasty, um, you know, behaviors come out of performers that I had previously really respected and, um, you know, it changed my opinion about a lot of people. It, it, it does, you know, there, there is a way, you know, if you have a difference of opinion, there is a way to express yourself. Um, and I guess mm-hmm. it's like the way that you express yourself, you know, the, the way that other people are going to see you. So just remember when you're marketing yourself online, it's whatever you do, whatever you write, it's, it's there, it's always out there. And even if you delete it fast, 
someone's probably screenshotting. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they definitely have. 